greetings, we present the membrane cell. Membrane cell produces chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and sodium hydroxide. These three are very important substances used in industry to make several types of very essential products useful to humanity. So this cell was tested in the year 2013, chemistry paper 2, and again in the year 2016, chemistry paper 2. Join us in this video as we remind ourselves of how it works and going ahead to answer questions as tested in the years 2013 and 2016 chemistry paper 2. So we shall start with the raw materials. And as we can see from the diagram, the membrane cell utilizes two raw materials. That is brine that comes in from the anode side. And then we have water that comes in from the cathode side. So, having looked at the raw materials, let us go ahead and explain what happens at the anode. So anode, we have brine, and brine has four ions, sodium ions being highly concentrated, chloride ions also highly concentrated, but then we also have a bit of hydrogen ions from the little water that is there in brine and hydroxyl ions. So, because chloride ions are highly concentrated as compared to hydroxyl ions, they get preferentially discharged at anode. And therefore, the equation at anode is that two chloride, two moles of chloride ions in aqueous state are able to be discharged to give one mole of chlorine gas and two electrons. So the gas that leaves through opening Y, or the gas that leaves as gas Y is actually chlorine gas. Another thing we need to note is that our anode is made of titanium. Moving to cathode, the first thing we need to know is that cathode is made of either nickel or steel. And because we are bringing in water, at cathode, we shall discharge two moles of hydrogen ions through acceptance of two moles of electrons, and we are able to get hydrogen gas that then leaves as shown by the arrow through this other uh, opening. So, back to our anode. The moment chloride ions have been discharged, we remain mainly with sodium ions. These sodium ions then migrate through the membrane to the cathode. The sodium ions are able to move through the membrane from anode to cathode where they combine with the hydroxyl ions that were left on this other side and we are able to form sodium hydroxide from the reaction between sodium ions and hydroxyl ions. So this way we are able to get our three products as described at the beginning of our video that membrane cell is able to give us chlorine as gas Y, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide. 
So with that, we move now to 2013 and 2016 chemistry paper 2, question number 4, where we review the questions that were tested concerning the membrane cell. So the first question is asking us to identify gas Y. And I think this one, through our discussions, we've been able to agree that gas Y is actually chlorine gas for one mark. Part two, describe how aqueous sodium hydroxide is formed in the above setup. This is for two marks. The candidate was expected to answer the question as follows. The first thing that happens is that at cathode, we have seen hydrogen ions being discharged. This would give our student the first half mark. At anode, we discharge chloride ions, and we have said this is because of their higher concentration as compared to our usual hydroxyl ions or hydroxide ions. Once the two have been discharged, the sodium ions then migrate, they migrate to the cathode. Of course, through the membrane, through the membrane, this would give our student the next half mark. And finally, we say that where at the cathode, they combine, the sodium ions combine with hydroxyl ions or hydroxide ions to form sodium hydroxide for the last half a mark, totaling to two marks. Part three, we are asked that one of the uses of sodium hydroxide is in the manufacture of soap, we were asked to state one other use of sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide can be used to manufacture bleaches. Sodium hydroxide can also be used to manufacture drugs. So we were asked any one, and therefore any of those two would give the student the one mark for section three. For part B, we are told to study the information given in the table below and answer the questions that follow. So here, we have half reactions and the electrode potential. So for D ions, accepting two electrons to form a D solid, the E naught value is negative 0 0.13 for E positive 0 0.80 F we have positive 0 0.68 G negative 2.87 H positive 0 0.34 and finally J negative 2.71 so we are supposed to use these values to help us answer the questions that follow. And so the first question that follow is that we are asked to construct an electrochemical cell that will produce the largest electromotive force. So here a student was supposed to pick the half reaction with the most positive E0 value together with the one with the most negative E0 value. The two would give the largest electromotive force. But as we draw our electrochemical cell, 
it is a rule that the cell that should be on the left hand side should be the one that has undergone oxidation so before we draw a student is supposed to note which of the two would be on the left and which of the two would be on the right so going back to our table we realize that g with negative 2.87 actually has the most negative and e with positive 0 0.87 0 0.80 sorry uh, has the most positive so between e and g which one should we put on the left hand side and here we normally say that the half reaction with the most negative e not value is normally the strongest reducing agent being a reducing agent it will get oxidized and for that matter we shall put g on the left hand side because the rule states that the half cell where oxidation takes place must be the one that we start drawing so for our question we would draw the half cell of g on the left and the half cell of e where reduction would take place on the right so here we will have the electrolyte containing g ions and then we shall connect the two using a salt bridge we shall connect the two using a salt bridge then on the right we have an electrolyte that contains e ions of course one mole and then for our electrodes this would be a strip of g and on the right we would have a strip of e then these ones we are able to connect through a voltmeter so that we are able to take the reading so that was what the examiner expected of the student and labeling electrode g half a mark electrolyte g half a mark electrolyte e half a mark electrode e half a mark salt bridge half a mark and the voltmeter half a mark giving us a total of three marks if a student interchanged the half cells then he or she would not score the full marks for that section so please be keen as you draw an electrochemical cell get to know which half cell should be on the left and which half cell should be on the right roman 2 of part b is asking us to now go ahead and calculate that emf of the cell that we have just constructed so emf is given by the formula e reduced minus e oxidized and we've agreed e the half cell e with positive 0 0.80 volts would be reduced so we shall subtract from it g which will be oxidized and g has e not value of negative 2.87 so if you do that quick arithmetic we are able to get emf of positive 6 3.67 volts it is two marks so one mark for that relation and then another mark for the answer together with the units so if units are missing we lose a half a mark for the final answer finally we were asked to explain why it is not advisable to store a solution containing e ions in a container made of h so if you go back to our table h has 
E not value of positive 0 0.34 and E has E not value of negative 2.87. So the reason as to why we cannot store a solution containing E in a container of H is that H has a higher H has a higher tendency to lose electrons because of its higher E naught value. So what would happen is that it would hence it would displace or react with E ions. So higher tendency to lose electrons and react one mark each giving us a total of the two marks as demanded by the question. We have come to the end of our video where we have discussed the membrane cell. Students should know that apart from the membrane cell, we do have the diaphragm cell and the mercury cell that also gives us chlorine, hydrogen, and sodium hydroxide. Join us in our next video as we have a look at these other cells that are able to give us the same product. All the best in your revision and thank you for keeping it the Kenyan teacher.